Welcome to this new life. My name is Per Hilgård and I'm going to be your host for the next 29 minutes. And I'm very excited about today's program. Today we are going to have a review of uh, what God did in a recent festival we just did uh, in the continent of Africa. It was just amazing what God was doing. And um, the town we were in, everybody was talking about this, no matter what their religious belief was, about what God was doing. So many people got an encounter with the living God. So many people had their life changed by Jesus Christ. Many sick came to the, uh, um, to the festival and had an encounter with God and, and many testified that they were healed right there and then on the spot. And today I'm going to make a lot of focus on uh, what God was doing also in these healings. And at the end of the program, we are going to close with a word of prayer so that if you are sick, we would like to pray for you as well. But before we start to share, take a look at that joy at this festival. What a joy. This is because we serve a God that is gracious, merciful, and loving. Let's start to read today from the book of Psalm, chapter 86, verse 15, where it says this, But you, O Lord, are God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in mercy and truth. What a powerful, powerful description of God. He is full of mercy, full of compassion. Do you know God in heaven? He loves you. Do you know that He has compassion with you? I don't know what you might be suffering or facing here in life. Life can be rough and tough. But do you realize that there's a God in heaven that loves you, that has compassion with you, that looks at you not with condemnation, but with mercy, and He wants to help you. The most significant sign of the love of God, we read in the Gospel of John chapter 3, verse 16, where it says so, For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God so loved the world. God so loved you. No matter from what nation, background, tribe, language group you belong to, God so loved you that He sent His only begotten Son. That is Jesus Christ. He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to this earth. It was not to condemn us. It was not to kind of put us into bondage or put limitations around our life. Jesus came because God loves us. And when we look at Jesus, we see how the love of God is in function. And everywhere Jesus went, people had an encounter with the living God. For some, it was an encounter to be set free. From others, it was to have a new beginning. And many were also healed wherever Jesus was going. And maybe you sit and you think, okay, but that is many years ago. And how can I know that, yeah, God sent Jesus, but, but how can I know that Jesus was also operating out of love? Let's read another scripture. It's from Matthew chapter 9, verse 36, where it says this. When Jesus saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep, having no shepherd. Jesus was moved with compassion. He didn't sit down and wait for them to improve and be better. He didn't sit down and was waiting, I'm going to help you when you start to do this or stop doing that. He was looking at people 
even those who were living a horrible lifestyle way out of the plan and love of God, he looked at them with compassion. That's the way Jesus looks at you, with compassion. He wants to help you. He loves you. You are not sick, you are not suffering because God is punishing you. He, you are not sick or suffering because God don't want to help you. You are sick and suffering because the world is a tough place to be in. Sometimes it's maybe because we have made wrong choices. Other times it's simply because that, as the Bible says, that the world is under the, the influence of the evil one. God for sure, all through the Bible, is being described as a God who loves us. He sent His Son because He loves you. His Son was moved with compassion. And in Hebrew chapter, Hebrew chapter 13, verse 8, it says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It is the same Jesus as we read about in the Bible that I today is going to share about and tell you today's stories of what Jesus is doing, not only in Africa, but all over the world. I've seen it with my own eyes, how Jesus Christ is a powerful, merciful, compassionate God. Let's go to festival now. One of the things in the festivals is that, that we always, at the very end, every night of the four nights we do this, at the very end, we close with a word of prayer for those who are sick and needy. We pray two prayers every night. The first prayer is for those who, who wants to have Jesus to come in as a savior. I'm gonna, at the end, share a little bit more about this. The second prayer, is for those uh, who are sick and needy. And as the time of Jesus, where we read in the Bible, how multitudes were flocking around him, for him to speak to them, for him to, uh, um, to pray over them, so it is today. Every time we give this invitation, the area around the platform is full of people that needs a touch from Jesus. And it's not me they are praying to, it's not me they are asking for, it is Jesus. I'm just an ordinary man, but I believe in an extraordinary God. I believe that Jesus Christ, He is the Almighty God that came to help and set us free. And every night, many, many came even to the platform to give testimony. We know many did not have the courage, so uh, would like to come and, and share what God has done in, in their life. And also we had a, a limitation of time because this could be going on and on. But let me just share a few testimonies from each night of what Jesus was doing, just for you to convince. And you'll also see some footage of these people, that these are real people living in year 2023. The first was a little girl and she was born deaf and mute. It was her aunt that brought her up to the platform and she verified that it was really um, uh, her situation. And I also asked the crowd if there were anybody else who knew this, uh, this girl. And many lifted their hands and they also yelled to me, all of them, and said, yes, it's true, she has been totally deaf and totally mute since birth. And her aunt, uh, explained how after prayer, 
um, her, her niece said, you know, uh, you know, said, I can hear now and started to make uh, sounds with her, her voice. And we brought her to the platform and uh, of course there was a lot of confusion going on when you usually cannot hear and you usually cannot speak at all. Just to kind of, there's so many new impressions. But when I was clapping, she could hear the clapping and um, she could hear when I was whispering in her ears. And um, even though she could not at all speak freely uh, at once and make sentences, because remember this is all new to her. She started right away simply just to, to make these sounds and now she was going to learn to form sentences. So it was a totally new life to her that, that was given to her. There was also a woman that came and she had an abscess in her lower abdomen. And she, when she showed how big that abs abscess was, you know, she showed, she pointed to her hands, even though it was in her, in her lower abdomen, you know, she kind of showed it how it was quite big. And actually she needed surgery, the doctor said, because none of the treatment had been able to, to deal with that uh, abscess and she needed surgery. But she said, when I came here tonight and we were prayed over in the name of Jesus, something happened. And when I checked myself afterwards, that abscess was dried out and it was gone. Only God could do something like that in a split second but also he did it. In a split second, what she had been suffering from and which had been very painful and maybe intimidating for her, Jesus knew of it and healed her in a split second. What an amazing testimony this is. Another powerful, powerful testimony was a man. I would say he was maybe around 70 years old. He had for some time suffered of prostate cancer. And not only prostate cancer, but this cancer had spread. So he also had a huge tumor in his, in his lower private body parts, a huge cancer tumor. He needed surgery, but he had no money to get surgery. This man was not a Christian, but he decided that he would go to this festival that we held. He came to the festival and um, there he was having prayers. And um, he said something of great interest. This is a man that's not believing in the Jesus that, that I'm believing in and the Jesus I'm praying to for healing. He said, I felt like a wind were coming over him. That's what he said. He felt like a wind blowing on him. He even said to those standing next to him, said, did you also feel that, that wind? And they said, no, we didn't. And then he realized that that big cancer tumor was gone. It was simply gone when that wind, which is the spirit of Jesus Christ, was touching him. When he came home, you know, he had no problems with, um, with his, uh, uh, to pee, with his urine in, anymore. He took off his catheter and, and he said, I am just completely well now. I have been well, there's no signs of cancer, tumor is gone. Um, I, I am all well and functioning again. There's no problem at all all. And listen, he was surrendering his heart to Jesus. Sunday morning he came to, to a Christian church and he stood up and he shared his testimony and he said, now Jesus Christ is in my heart and I'm going to live with Jesus in my heart and I'm going to tell others about Jesus because of this miracle I have experienced. And maybe you think, oh, but uh, I'm an old person. This man, he was not a young person anymore. But Jesus still cared for him. Jesus still loved him and healed him. What an outstanding testimony. Cancer is a horrible sickness. 
I know many who is suffering of cancer. We have lost family members ourselves to this horrible sickness. And I'll just be honest to you, I cannot explain why everybody is not being healed. But at the same time, I always encourage people, keep believing, keep praying, keep seeking Jesus for your healing. Like this man did. I think his miracle of being healed of cancer was great. But it was not the biggest miracle of the miracles he experienced. The biggest one was that he decided to have Jesus come into his heart to become his personal savior. He was 70 years old. I don't know how many years he had left, maybe 10, 15, I don't know. But I know this, that not only was he healed in the rest of his life here on earth, but he would still one day face death. But then he was not alone. Having Jesus in your heart as your Savior and as your God is also the meaning that you will have eternal life with Jesus. Make sure not only to reach out for Jesus for healing, but also reach out like this man did for Jesus to be your Savior. Now, the thing is this, that these, remember, these are all testimonies from today. This is not stories 2,000 years ago. This is testimonies through people, physical people, that hears the word spoken from the Bible about Jesus Christ. And I believe Jesus is a healer today. I'm just a simple believer and follower of Jesus Christ. But do you know that Jesus asked those who believe in him to be channels of his mercy, compassion, channels of healing? Not that we can heal anyone, but God has decided that through believers of Jesus, that we can pray for, peop for people and we should truly believe that Jesus will then help them. Let me read a few scriptures that is, that is confirming that this is, this is a strategy that Jesus has made. In the Gospel, Gospel of Luke chapter 9, verse 1 and 2, it says that then he, that's Jesus, called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Here we read about Jesus sending out his disciples in an assignment. Not that they were important, not that they were those who were healing people. It was Jesus who was healing them. But it was them who were like the channel to it. If you imagine like you have a pipeline uh, in your house, you open the faucet and out comes the water. It is not the faucet, it's not the pipeline that it, it's the matter. They are just channelizing what is really about the water. And this is the same here, that he sent out his 12 disciples and he uh, said that his life should flow through them uh, and so that people would experience the live-giving, healing water coming from Jesus Christ. Let's read another scripture in Luke chapter 10, where it says, After these things the Lord appointed 70 others also, not the 12 disciples, but now 70 others, and sent them two by two before his face into every uh, city and place, where he himself was about to go. Now these disciples were going to prepare things. And then listen, when they're coming back, they say something interesting. And he says to them, and heal the sick there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. This was one of the assignments that Jesus gave these 70 disciples. He said, go share the good news that the kingdom of God is near and pray for the sick. 
He even said that they should experience how they got healed. There's hope and healing for everyone. And there's another powerful scripture about this. Because my, you might say, okay, yeah, that was some disciples, there were some other disciples. But what about today? Well, today we are under what uh, Jesus said in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verse, uh, let's read from verse uh, 17 and 18. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them, and they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. This means that we are been given the mandate to pray for people. We have been given that we can pray for those who are suffering. This is what we are believing. This is what I would like to do right now at the end of this program. I would like to pray for you. I'm not the healer. It is Jesus Christ who is the healer. I'm not going to be getting the credits for anything. It is all Jesus. But I would like to pray for you right now. I would like for you to put your hand upon your sick body part or upon your heart. Close your eyes. Open your heart. And start to believe that Jesus Christ is going to touch you right where you are seated right now. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you that on the cross you paid for our healing. I thank you, Jesus, that your compassion is upon every person, that you truly love us and that you are a healer. I pray in the name of Jesus for sickness and diseases right now to be healed cancers to be healed, pain in bodies to be healed, sickness in legs or backs, lungs, in heads, to be healed in the name of Jesus. We pray that you will touch people right there where they are at and come with your healing power into their bodies. I thank you, Jesus, and I give you all the glory and all the honor. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Wait and see. Keep believing. Check yourself. And if Jesus has healed you, why don't you contact our call center? Just send a little message or call them and tell what Jesus has done in your life. You're also welcome to call them and ask for more prayers. And we will be happy to pray with you then. Let me pray one more prayer. And it's for those of you who don't have Jesus as your Savior and your Lord. Jesus is more than a healer. He's more than one who is making miracles. He's our Savior. Jesus is the only one that can give us eternal life and save our soul. That's why it's so important that we put all our trust in Jesus Christ, that we ask him to come to forgive our sins that is disqualifying us for heaven and instead have Jesus to come and save us. If you would like to have Jesus come and become your personal savior, then I would like you to put your hand upon your heart right now. And then we are going to pray. You are going to pray this same prayer as I am saying with your own words asking Jesus to come and become your savior. Close your eyes right now and pray this prayer together with me. Jesus Christ, I believe you're the son of God. Forgive my sins. Save my soul. I will believe in you. I will follow you. I will worship you. Be my God for the rest of my life. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. When you prayed this prayer from your heart, Jesus did hear that prayer with his heart. 
I'm sure you already now just feel this presence of God, or maybe you feel a likeness all of a sudden. Maybe you experience that all the condemnation and guilt that you have been suffering from is being lifted away right now. That is Jesus that is present in your life with his Holy Spirit right now. Now it's important that you keep yourself close to Jesus every day, the rest of your life. Let me give you three advices that will help you in doing so. Number one, pray to Jesus every day. Don't pray to any other name. Pray to Jesus. You don't have to be in a certain place. You don't have to be in a certain position. You don't have to do it on a certain time. You can pray to Jesus at any time, at any position. It's like talking with your best friend. Why don't you just start out simply and say, Jesus Christ, and then tell him all the good things and all the bad things. Give thanks to him for what he has done and that he will be with you and your family. Number two, when we read in the Bible, we learn more about Jesus. You can start to read in the, one of the gospel, maybe the gospel of Luke or gospel of John, and there you will start to learn more about this Jesus that you're now serving and believing in. Maybe you say, but I don't have a Bible. Then maybe you have a smartphone. Do you know that you can for free download the entire Bible as an app, having on your phone, and then you have the Bible. Just make it a good daily thing you do, that you read a little bit in the Bible every day. In that way, God is speaking to you, and you learn more, and God will guide you through life, and how much He loves you, and, and what's waiting for you in Him. The third thing is that you need to be involved in a fellowship of believers who's also worshiping Jesus. Maybe you don't know or realize if there's a fellowship like that in your neighborhood. If there is, why don't you go and approach them and say, if you could be part of this Christian fellowship, whether it's called a, a church or it's called a Christian fellowship, if they are preaching the Bible and they are believing what I share here, you go and join them. And that way you have somebody where you can worship Jesus together and people that can pray together with you. And if you say, but that's not possible where I live, then remember this, we can have fellowship, you and programs on this channel. And in that way you can get inspiration and learn more about Jesus in this way. And also I would encourage you, if you prayed along in this prayer, to contact our call center. The information will come in a little bit. Contact our call center. They will be happy to talk with you, guide you, pray with you, and in that way give you direction for what is next now in your life. You have been watching this new life. May God bless you. See you next week.